Okay, hi. Um, I'm back. I just watched episode one again. I had to. Like, I, I recorded part zero a couple hours ago, and I was thinking, I was like, okay, maybe I'll do like one a day or something. Um, but this is probably gonna go up when I finish it. And I don't think I'm gonna edit these. Um, so I watched episode one again. This is the third time I've seen it. Um, also, going forward, I'm gonna say this now, and maybe not every time, but there will be spoilers. Um, I'm gonna mostly talk about the episode at hand, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk about a lot of things that happen later because I already know. Um, so I'm, I'm not, not that I'm gonna, like, spoil, go into super spoilers of, like, next season, like, the second season, but, like, I might bring things up about, like, how, because I already know what happened, so. Um, that's spoilers. And I also wrote, like, a bunch of bullet points to talk about way longer than I realized, so we're probably gonna do one episode of video because I, I wrote down way more for episode one than I thought I would. Um, so a little more context, I started watching on Tuesday morning, uh, of last week, about four episodes at, like, 1am, uh, tw about 24 hours later, about 1am on Wednesday, four more episodes, then, you know, uh, Wednesday night, thir very early Thursday morning, I watched the, the eight episodes of season two, and then I almost finished watching it again within a couple more days, um, I, I literally had, like, three episodes left of, to re of my rewatch of season two, but now I'm here doing this, so... Um, I've only seen a season and a half twice, and like the rest of season two once. Um, so that's where I'm gonna delete all these notes as I'm saying them. Um, so that's kind of like where I'm at. Like again, oh, also I um, <laughs> I recorded over 120 video <laughs> diaries while on my first watch through of this show. Um, and again, some of them are like five seconds, but I just was on my fucking iPhone. And I'm just recording myself watching this show. And some of them are like 5 seconds, some of them are like 15 minutes, like, I recorded just a lot of shit about me talking. Not the most pleasant of videos to look at, um, especially because it's dark and I'm crying and they're close-ups of my face, but maybe, I, I have them all saved, so maybe they'll go somewhere one day. Um, first thing I wrote down is that I relate to Charlie so much more, even though I relate to a lot of aspects of both Charlie and Nick. Um, a lot of my experiences in being gay and being in relationships um, and honestly, just personality-wise, I much more relate to Charlie, but there's a lot of Nick that I relate to, obviously, too. Uh, then I said, when they first met, that's how I feel most of the time when I have insta-crushes. Like, I'm blown back, and the other guy isn't, or maybe isn't in that moment, or is good at hiding it, or isn't sure. Uh, but Charlie was very instantly crushing on him, um, on him, and Nick maybe wasn't. Um, I think he was, but again, Nick is kind of just, like, figuring it out, and Charlie, like, already knows that he's gay. So... Yeah, and that's kind of how it's, like, happened for me a lot in, like, actual, you know, when stuff happens. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I said, it's, it obviously didn't take Nick long to realize how awesome Charlie is and how much he loved him, even though there was, there might not have necessarily been, like, an insta-crush both ways. Um, and I'll elaborate that more in a, on that more in a couple of bullet points, um, and what I mean by that. Um, <laughs> Ben leaving instantly and being like, don't tell anyone about this before Charlie could even say bye was a very powerful moment where I very instantly understood the dy dynamic uh, because of the scene and the, di the dynamic between uh, Charlie and Ben's relationship. Um, you know, even though I haven't really experienced something like that where, like, I am kind of, like, seeing someone, but they're just so closeted that, like, they're like that. That hasn't really happened to me, but, like, I get it. And that definitely, like, does happen to people, you know? So, I, I understand, even though that necessarily... Or that isn't necessarily... Has not really happened to me. Um, oh my god, th I love this. With the hi over and over again in the hallway. Because, like, you know, Nick kept on being like, hi, you know? And then Charlie was like, hi, you know? Um, I do believe that Nick Nelson, like, that character, that he is just that nice. And I don't, like, I... So, I don't think he's, like, faking any of this at all at this point. Um... But the interactions making me believe was um, Nick was pretty interested or had a bit of a crush very early on too, uh, because you know Charlie's already out. So like Charlie is like, if anyone's gonna like be obvious about their crush, you would think it would be Charlie, you know, in the ways that like. But that's why Nick is m making the first move and well, not not first move, but you know, just being like, hey, like hi, you know, a lot because it's much easier to for Nick to be like hi, you know, and that's it because nobody can press you for saying hi to someone, right? But it's much harder for Charlie to do that because then all the people around in the social setting will be like, oh, like, you know, Charlie's saying hi a lot to Nick, you know, but Nick like is feel is probably feeling this things already just like he's already kind of crushing on him. So he's like being like, hi, because like, again, 
Nick is already nice, and, like, nobody's gonna fucking press him for saying hi to some dude, you know? Um, believe Nick was pretty interested or had a crush early on, too, because, remember, Charlie is already out with Nick, yeah. And even though Nick is <laughs> the nicest fucking dude ever, I think it seems to me, like, even if he wasn't instantaneous, that Nick was having some feelings even if he didn't even know it at this time. So maybe even, like, during this high, like, like these, these, like, high scenarios, he's like, I don't even necessarily think that he knew he had a crush on Charlie. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I also, I also haven't well, read the books or read any of the, I've only seen the show. Um... So I don't really know what was going through Nick's mind, but like to me, it's it was very like even like he might have just been like oh wow, or he might have just been like you know what this dude like he might not even have known that he was like crushing on him, but like you know the behavior it w was was very much showing there. Um, and then I said obviously Charlie is geeked too because Nick is saying hi first usually yeah because again like Nick is the one that's saying hi first, and I just wrote Ben pisses me off. <laughs> Um, Tao buying L's drink made me instantly understand that there was something there between them on first watch, uh, watch through the show, uh, even though the development with each other takes much longer than a lot of the other relationships, where it's like, when, when they said that, like, they, the, one of the first lines from Tao was just like, oh, I bought L's drink again without realizing. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I got that, like, instantly, and, like, what that would, 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 what that would mean, and what it would end up meaning. I very much understood that. Um, Tao pisses me off a lot through the show. I'm not gonna lie, because he really can't fathom that people are or can be different even here, like, even he when, where he's from the story, he's like, he couldn't fathom that Nick, you know, might not be straight and that he's just some super jock, like, you know, like, he, not even when it comes to, like, sexuality, he just can't fathom that, like, people n might not be what his notion of them is, um, and there's a lot of character development around that, but, like, it takes him a while to, like, fucking stop that, or at least, like, do it less, you know, because it, it's not good. <laughs> Um, then I wrote, I feel for Elle's initial loneliness and fear for being in a new school as someone who switched schools many times throughout elementary, middle, and high school, and also in college. Um, that was, like, the kind of thing that I was in that episode where I was like, yeah. Because, like, again, I, in school, was not as confident or as comfortable with myself as I am right now. To where, like, it's not that I was, like, very, like, super shy or that I was, like, avoiding people that, like, that. And I don't think L is either. Because, like, when people do talk to her, she's chill, right? So I think, like, it's very similar to where, like, it's just kind of scary, you know? And, like, it's new. And also there's the fact that she's, like, trans and that, like, a lot of people probably already know that even if she hasn't met them yet. It's very, like, I understand why, like, oh, it's kind of, like, lonely and scary, but, like, you want to make new friends, but you don't know, you know? I, I get, I relate to that, um, a lot as someone who has switched schools many times. I was in at least three or four different, probably, like, four or five different elementary schools, two different middle schools, one high school, then I was doing online high school at some point, then I was at community college, went to uni. I say uni like I'm fucking British, dude. Um, <laughs> um, so I've been to a lot of different, attended a lot of different schools, you know? And I wrote, the gay art teacher is so real, oh my god. No, that's about it. Um, then, then with the conversation with the art teacher, Charlie's like, I've got a boyfriend. And he's like, congratulations? Or like, he's, he's like, congratulations. And then Charlie's like, uh, and then the, the teacher's like, uh, <laughs> he's like, so not congratulations? Um, that was funny. And yeah. Uh, and then, and then at the end, he's like, well, have you talked to him? And Charlie's like, no, and he's like, well, you should talk to him. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yes, and that's really funny because I get, I get it. I get why he said that, and I get why Charlie is like, and also Charlie's just a kid, and he's just like, no, I haven't talked to him yet. But it's like, just talk to him, dude. Um, the typing and deleting messages throughout the show is so real, and how they fucking do that. Um, yeah, dude, nah, like that shit is fucking real as fuck. <laughs> And then I wrote, LMAO, the sister Tori, LMAO, was he a knob? LMAO, <laughs> she's so real. And she's the best on screen every time, how she just always gets the vibe and can read the room, but is just quiet and mysterious and loves her brother, so she's cool. She really is that. Like, she literally just be getting the energy instantly all the time, and she reading the fuck out of people. But she don't really care. She just loves her brother. She's just chilling. She likes to be alone. She's just, like, watching. You know, she's raw as fuck. I love the sister. Uh, Charlie's belief that he has to settle or will, will probably have to settle is very relatable to me and previous mindsets I used to have about maybe I have to be complacent and I will never find true uh, perfection and love in my life. I've very much had those thoughts at many stages of my life where it's like, oh, like, maybe I'll never be in love or maybe if I am with someone, like, maybe even if I feel like this isn't right, like, maybe I, I it is or I have to, you know, like, thoughts like that where it's like, eh, like, 
I'm not capable of true love or like thinking that like being treated like this is maybe it's worth it like no like I used to think like that a lot and it's very bad and I'm glad Charlie like you know would later is later much more comfortable to see that like oh like this is what he deserves you know of like an actual like later on like a, an actual relationship um <laughs> he loves that he plays the drums yeah not much to say about that that's cute uh, I love these scenes that they were their dream nightmare versions of Charlie's mind and he's fantasizing about <laughs> Nick confessing love and he just and then Nick ends up asking for him to join the rugby team like I do that a lot especially with like love situations where it's like you know in my mind I'm like oh my god is this gonna happen you know extreme positives and negatives where it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then it's just something like completely normal and we're like oh like well <laughs> um Nick even says hi immediately when Charlie walks into the locker room and boys were talking shit 2.2 seconds before Charlie walked in and Nick was there and he's just hearing all this shit and then Charlie walks in and Nick is like hi fucking powerful dude <laughs> fucking powerful first one doesn't even hesitate he just says hi uh to Charlie love that um my feelings of falling for boys have always been Charlie coded and not Nick coded because I've always been sure I'm gay in high school and beyond but nick is questioning his sexuality so he's kind of like unsure but charlie very much knows what's going on so that's kind of an elaboration of what i was talking about towards the beginning where it's like you know charlie understands his feelings pretty quickly even though he's like kind of scared of them nick does not really at this point or at least it seems to me um that he's just like very like do i like this dude like I, you know like it it, did, it makes much less sense to him but that dynamic dynamic ends up creating you know how nick can approach charlie more and how it ends up developing because of that and i, I love that um because again i'm more on the side of like ben experiences on the side of charlie than than nick um ben is a fucking downer bro yeah <laughs> nick's <laughs> nick saving charlie yes piss off oh my god i'm melting i love piss off and god bless fucking nick dude like god like <laughs> you have nothing to be sorry about and charlie's still saying sorry i can relate to this so hard um talking about me oh yes yeah, so, so then um i actually do this a lot still to this day and like in eighth grade it was like in is it seventh eighth or ninth grade i my, my timeline i'm so horrible with estimating time um we were at, we, I, it was, I think it was for the Alice in Wonderland play. It was the King of Hearts, you know? Um, we were having a cast party after the final play was over, and this one really tall girl, uh, she was playing the Queen of Hearts, and I don't remember her name, but we were like, you know, we were kind of just, it was, a, it was a little party at someone's house with, uh, with the whole cast, and like, we had to do like impressions of each other, and she was doing a an impression of me, and remember, I'm in like middle school, like 8th grade or something, or 7th grade. It was 7th grade, it was 7th grade, yeah, because I, I was in, um, the play in seventh grade oh my god i f i forgot this was seventh grade but yeah so anyway she's like she was she's doing an impressive to me and she's like oh my god i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry like if i accidentally walked into like the girls dressing room and like you know or something like that and she like because like i would just always be apologizing and again that's not really like a love context thing but like that's kind of like a, a thing that i can relate to with charlie where it's like he's just constantly apologizing because like he feels he's like a burden and a nuisance and like maybe sometimes he is but usually like he's kind of not and he's kind of just chill but like he's worried that people will perceive him that way and um yeah like yes <laughs> um that girl was teasing me but in that but like she was she was great she was nice she wasn't like doing it maliciously um last thing i have written down or second last thing is charlie stressing about making the first text move and then sending thank you and sending the x is so real and then you know nick smiles at it it's real because like yeah like charlie is like sitting here thinking about texting nick thank you because like he's already crushing in his mind but he's like i can't say make that obvious now but he's like i just want to say thank you anyway so it's like that's the reason but the sub reason is because he's interested in him and he's like oh like do I, how do I say this? Do I, and he's like reversing the text and shit. He's like, I don't know. And then he just fucking does it and he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, uh, Nick sees it and he's like, <laughs> he's like, mm. um, and that whole s s ending scene of that was so awesome to me. I was like, cause I'm like, fucking yeah, like that is how it is, especially for in scenarios like that, especially how it's been for me where it's like, I'm not even like asking them out dude i'm like saying like some completely unrelated thing but like i'm kind of talking to them because i want to you know or even if i don't want to but even if i just like i'm like oh he's cute you know it's very like yeah like even saying like hey thank you for saving me from a fucking maniac fucking psycho assaulter dude like 
I don't even know how to send this message, you know, and that's very real. And then I wrote down uh, Look Up Dover Beach, the song I was playing towards the end of the episode, because uh, when I was watching the episode just now, I was like, wait, I'm gonna go on Spotify and like listen to that, because like that song was kind of hitting, like, you know, in that episode, so I might, I might add that to my likes. Um, and that's episode one. Oh yeah, 15 minutes, even longer than the intro. I'm kind of shocked. Anyway, um, I'll probably do these like, you know, once a day, maybe. <laughs> don't, hold, don't hold me to that. But, um, fucking very much enjoying doing this already. One episode. I was planning on doing season one in one video, season two in another. And then I was like, oh, the intro is so long. Let me just do it. And then I was like, maybe I'll just do two episodes in a video. But, like, it makes more sense now that I'm, like, looking at the time. It's like, I'll just do one video per episode. So there will be, like, you know, the intro and then 16 parts to this. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Um, I have so much to say. That was just episode one. This is gonna be- Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I was eating Pop-Tarts while I was watching episode one again. I was drinking some water. Um, I can't wait to talk about so much shit. I'm being so real, dude. Like, this show has me passionate about things that I didn't even know I was passionate about. So, uh, I'm gonna end there. And, um, thank you for watching. And go watch Heartstopper. <laughs> Bye.